So the chicken rig is useful for when you're going fluke fishing, when you're going wreck fishing, uh, porgy fishing, sea bass, uh, cod, pretty much everything along those lines. Chicken rig is also known as a high-low rig. I'm not sure exactly why it's called chicken rig. I know it started in the south, but high-low rig and chicken rig are the same thing. All right, guys, so let's get into tying this chicken rig. So with the chicken rig, you tie two dropper loops and then a sinker loop. That's what it's going to consist of. So I typically like to st start with the bottom dropper loop. So as far as the bottom dropper loop goes, you're going to want to go about a foot and a half from the bottom. That's where I personally like to start from. I'm going to wrap it around my hand, or you can just simply go like this. It's going to look like an upside down support ribbon to start, kind of like this, okay? So once you have that, you're going to put it just like this, so just like that, okay? You're going to put it between your pointer finger and your thumb. That's the best way to hold it. You can rest it in between your middle finger as well. So from there, you're going to have two at the top and one at the bottom. Two at the top, one at the bottom. So you're going to twist the two, 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 do it one more time, and then you're going to spread that top open, just like that, and you're going to pull that one through that's sitting on the bottom. So I like to look at it from at the top. So you're going to pull that open, and then you're going to pull that through, you're going to create like a triangle sail, and then I like to grab that with my teeth, and then pull the outside. And you end up with your dropper loop. For demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you how to tie it real quick, and then we can gauge it from there if you want to make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so before I just showed you the dropper loop and how it was tied, now I'm going to go a little bit faster. You can always rewind and go back into the video to see how it's tied. So I'm going to do a little bit bigger now, that way we can put all of our tackle on there. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to twist, 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 twist. So from there, I like to actually tie my sinker loop now. So I'm going to go a couple inches down and just do a basic overhand loop. I'm going to double it up and then go around. You can either go through once or twice. I like to do two times just for security purposes. And you're just going to do that. And then after or now, we, could we can cut our tag end off. You always want to make sure you cut that off. Otherwise, you're going to get tangled up and it's going to either tangle somebody else's line that you're fishing next to or tangle up on your line. So we're going to do that again at the top. We're going to go about a foot up again. Um, everybody has their own preference on how far apart they want their dropper loops to be. Just make sure that the hooks aren't touching. That's the biggest thing when you put your hooks on. So we're going to go from here. We're going to do that again. Okay, so now we have our sinker loop, we have our two dropper loops, and then we have this excess line. This excess line is what you're going to use to connect to your main line that's either coming from your reel, so it can either be your braid or your mono. So from there, we're going to connect that either using a barrel swivel or we're going to be using a, a knot that connects the two lines together. So you can use this barrel swivel, like I said, if you're going to be using the barrel swivel, you're going to be using a clinch knot, okay? So for the clinch knot, you're going to feed that through the barrel swivel. You're going to pull like this, so it should look something like this, okay? So you're going to pinch the top. You can always give yourself excess to work with. That works best. So you're going to pinch the top. You're going to hold these two together. You're going to twist, twist, twist. You want to keep that space open right there. That way you're going to feed your line through eventually. So you're going to twist, 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 twist. Keep going. You can go about like eight times if you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. You're going to want to wet your line, helps it to do that. So you wet your line, and then you're going to go through the opposite side that you came in. And then you can pull. I like to use my teeth because I have nails, so sometimes it makes it hard. And then you, once you start going down, it'll cinch down, and then you just go like that. A good way to make sure that you have that tight and it's good, you're going to put a hook through it. and just pull just to secure that and make sure it's all good and then like I said before you're gonna want to snip your tag ends off so now you have that all connected and then you're gonna do that same exact knot to connect to your braid okay 
So now let's get started on actually attaching your hardware. So you're going to have your hooks and your teasers. So you can use something like this. You can use a feather teaser, squid teasers, something along these lines. Um, so um, I'll go with the feather teasers just because it's the most basic. So you could put feather teasers on either way. You can put it on going this way or this way. I like to go this way because it creates basically a parachute effect. I think it looks better for presentation, but whatever you want to do, if I can get it through. Okay, there we go. Thank you. So it's going to go right through that. I'm going to show you the other way as well. So you're going to put it right through, and then you're going to take your hooks. If I could grab it, there we go. So you're going to take your hook, and it's going to face up like this, and you're going to feed it through. You're going to feed it through. It's going to go align with the bottom. And you're going to spread it open just like that. And then wrap it through. And then pull. You can double it up if you want. But it's going to fall and sit like this. And then when it gets wet, it's going to basically fall like an umbrella almost. Then you're going to do that again. I'm going to show you the other way, the most common way you'll see it put on with the eye going through the top. It's going to be the same exact thing. We're going to push it right through. We're going to go around, spread that open, and just wrap. And there you go. And then we're just going to add our sinker on, just a basic sinker loop. All right, and that is your chicken rig, also known as your high-low rig. So we have our barrel swivel on top, our two hooks with our dropper loop, and then a sinker loop. So it looks, should look something just like this. You can add other things on, like squids, like I said before. There's a whole variety of things you can add on. And also, like I said before, it's great for fluke fishing, wreck fishing, sea bass, porgy, um, anything along those lines. So just in case you guys missed anything or have any other questions, I do have a YouTube channel where I do tutorial videos on and pretty much what I just showed you guys, but uh, different segments. So if you do have any questions you want to refer to that, my YouTube is Jenna Fishing. Pretty simple. So good luck, everybody, in tight lines. See you soon.